Hey everybody, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I'm thinking about you and hoping that you're staying safe and healthy. And today we're going to be doing a really fun composition. This was a piece that I did a little while back. It was a prompt by another teacher, Cheryl Moot, who I absolutely adore. She did a really great little prompt on her Artitude page, and this is what came out for me. And so I am now uh, sharing it with you, which I'm very excited about. So things that you are going to need for class are, you're going to need to have a Micron PN pen. I love this pen. It's a really great one for tangling, but you can use an 01 or an 005, depending on what works for you. You are also going to need to have your Signo Uniball pen. This is my favorite white pen, but a uh, white uh, jelly roll will work or a Posca pen will also work in a pinch if you need it. And then lastly, you are going to need to have one of my very favorites, the Maryland Tile da -da -da -da, from tangledyogi.com. You can visit our shop at tangledyogi.com and check out all of our beautiful tiles. I work with some really nice paper for color pencils and I put these tiles together for you guys so that you're ultimately more successful in your endeavors. You know, Rick and Maria are always talking about how if we use really good quality materials, we're gonna be more successful and I totally agree with that. So that is why I came up with the Maryland tile and you know, while you're at tangledyogi.com, you can che check out the brown sugar Maryland tile too. It's a lot of fun to work with. But today we're working just with the sugar Maryland. Now, if you don't happen to have a Maryland tile, go ahead and just make your own diamond tile in your sketchbook and play along with us. But definitely go check out these tiles. They're a lot of fun and I know you'll really enjoy them. Don't tell my other tiles, but it's my favorite tile of all of them. All right, so now we have everything we need to get started. Let's do a little meditation to get centered and begin. Okay, so let's take a moment to get centered here before we begin our practice. For those of you who have never taken class with me before, I really do believe that just taking a moment to breathe and soften inside of our bodies helps us to create more relaxed Zen tangles. So go ahead and sit back into your chair here. Allow your spine to grow comfortably tall but not hard. Let your feet touch down onto the floor and let your shoulders melt away from your ears. And if you feel comfortable with it, you can allow your eyes to close for a moment. Let your hands rest in your lap, palms facing up. And just take a moment to soften through your facial features, your eyebrows, your jaw. Take a moment to swallow in your throat to relax your throat muscles. Relaxing through the chest and the belly, the hips and the thighs, the ankles and the feet. Feeling your entire body be at ease in this moment. And taking a moment to drop into your breath. As you breathe in, notice the body filling with breath. And as you breathe out, feeling the body release. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. And as you breathe in now, see if you can feel the whole front of the body expand with breath as it comes in. And as you exhale, feel the whole front body release the breath. On your next inhale, feel the entire back body filling with breath. And as you exhale, feel the release. And 
And on this next inhale, see if you can feel simultaneously the front body and the back body filling with breath. And exhaling and releasing. And then letting your breath soften to its natural pace. And take a moment to scan your body and notice if there's any places where you're still holding tension and see if you can soften just a little bit more in those places. Could be your shoulders, could be your throat, could be your belly or your hips. And taking in a nice deep breath right here and sending it to those places. And then letting it go with a sigh beginning to wiggle in your fingertips and wiggle in your toes. And then gently blinking your eyes open. And let's get ready to make some beautiful Zen tangles together. Okay, so let's get ourselves started here. So you can see that I've got my Maryland tile here that I'm working on. I'm just going to bring that down here. And I've got a pencil here that I'm going to be using to create my string. So the string is going to start just like this. I'm just going to very, very lightly start to divide the space right down the center. So I'm going from the top to the bottom. And then I'm going to turn my piece on its side and I will do the same. I'll go from one side to the other. And this is just going to break up the space so that we have uh, areas in which to work in. So you can see that when I zoom in, and I'll bring it up close, it almost looks like a kite. So it just has that nice little division there. We're going to let go of the pencil and we're going to start to work on the center of the piece here. So take a moment, finish that up, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've switched over to my Micron pen, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up about a half an inch away from the center of the piece here, and I'm just going to make a little dot, and then I'll do a half an inch from the bottom of the center of the piece, and I'll make a little dot, and I'm going to go ahead and make this nice and large for you so that you can really see what I'm up to. So I'm going to start to build my heart here, and you're going to see that my heart isn't really um, huge. It's just about an inch. And it's not a deep heart either. You can see that the top of the heart doesn't indent too deeply. I'm going to come up now about a quarter of an inch here and I'm going to create an aura around the heart. So you're going to see that I'm going to come out and then I'll come right back in again and I'll do the other side. Just like so so that you have that nice aurid heart right in the center. After you have that, we're going to go ahead and do some tipple that's going to be all the way around the piece. So you're going to see me just start to create these really nice soft circles. Now some people refer to these as pearls or perf. Um, so however you want to see it in your mind, go ahead and just begin to make your circles. And we'll be working inside of these a little bit later with shading. So make sure that you make them big enough that you can shade, but not too big. I'm just going to start to work my way around in here. Taking my time. And coming all the way around. And so there you have the first part of the piece. Go ahead and finish up. I'll see you soon. Okay, so for the next part of the piece, we're actually going to go back and grab our pencils for a minute because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide the piece again. And you can see 
Let's bring this in nice and close here. You can see that I've got the one line that's going through and the other line that's going across. Now we're going to divide this space right here. So all I'm going to do is come right down the center and make a nice diagonal line. And I'll come out the other side and intersect through this other side. And you can see that that's also in the middle between the two lines. So if I back out just a little bit, you can really see that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to come in right in the middle of this little quadrant that I have. And I'm just going to go ahead and divide it. And then I'll go ahead again and come out the other side. So it almost looks like you have an X that's going out either side of the heart here. So go ahead and divide that space. And then once you've divided that space, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our Micron PN pens again. And I'm going to come up from the top here about a half an inch, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a dot. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a seed-like shape. And you'll notice that I'm making it wide enough so that I can actually work inside of it. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same, coming down about a half an inch. And I'm going to make that seed-like shape right there. I'll turn my piece on its side and I'm going to do it again. So I'm coming out about a half an inch and making that seed like shape. And then I'm doing the same thing right here. I'll come over here now and start to do it on this one. So here I am. And then I'll do it over here. And then I'm going to do it on these two right here. So once you have that, we're going to start to work inside of those seeds. So go ahead and finish them up and I'll see you soon. So let's work inside of those seeds for a moment here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dot right in the center of the seed and then I'm going to do a little triangle shape that comes up to meet it, just like so. Once I have that, I'll do an aura right above the top of it. So we're going to turn our piece, coming up to the middle, make a little triangle shape, and then aura inside of it. Turning your piece, coming out halfway, doing your little triangle, and then aura. Turning, halfway, triangle, and aura. Coming up, make your dot, triangle, and aura. Dot, triangle, aura. Dot, triangle, and aura until you've come all the way around. And there you have it. So go ahead and finish those up and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, so let's build the next part. And this one's really fun. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just use this middle space as a place to land here. So you can see that I've made a little dot. Let's make that nice and large for you. So you can see I'm right here. I'm going to jump off the side of this guy and I'm going to make a little bit of a drop down and then I'm going to come up and connect just like so. It's almost like uh, a seagull. You can see like when you were a kid you used to draw those seagulls. I used, well, at least I used to draw them that way. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn and I'm going to find that middle point between these two seeds and make a little dot for me to land on. And you can see this one's a little bit bigger than the last one, but that's okay. And then I'm going to turn, make a dot, coming off the side, and then up and over. And you'll notice that I'm coming up at about the same spot so that it's starting to create a little bit of a shape there. So I'm looking for the middle, making my dot, coming down, and then I'm going up and over turning and looking for the center here, coming down 
and then up and over right here and coming up and over right here and up and over looking for the center down and up and over so that when you come back you've got this really beautiful centerpiece here I have to say it's no secret that I love the Maryland tile there's something about tangling on these diamond shapes that's really something special so finish yours up and we'll catch up and go on to the next part Okay, so we're going to start to build on this piece just a little bit. And you can see that I'm right here on the seed, right in here. So I'm going to start by finding a place up towards the top here that I can land on, because we're going to be making a leaf-like shape. And I'm also going to make another dot right here. So what it's going to look like is I'm going to go ahead and do a very gentle, almost A-like shape. And there's my leaf that's going to come in and touch into the piece. Then I'm going to come onto the inside right here, and I'm going to go ahead and aura just like so. And you'll notice that when I do that aura, I'm leaving enough space so that I can start to work inside of the border here. I'm going to flip the piece, and I'm going to do the same thing. So you're going to see that I'm just turning it upside down. I'm looking for this seed right here. And then I'm going to come up about the same size as that last one, right? So I'm thinking about that. So I'm going to come up right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop in. And drop in. Making my little dot on the inside. And then I'm auraing on the inside. So that now, when I turn the piece around, it's got a really interesting kind of juxtaposition. They balance each other out a little bit, which is really nice. Once you have that, on the inside of those leaves, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a little bit of a line and a circle on the end of it. We'll do the same thing down here. So all I'm going to do is a little bit of a line and a circle like so. Once you have that, we're going to start to add a little bit of dimension inside of the leaf here. And you can see that I'm right up here and I'm going to make a little V right at the top. And then I'm just going to make these very gentle lines coming down the inside. Just to give that a little bit of interest. And I'll flip it and I'll do the same thing on the other side. So go for it, finish that one up, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so we're going to begin to grow the piece up in towards the head of the diamond here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this area right here and grow right out of that area. So let's come in nice and close. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a wave in my line. So you're going to see me go up and over. And now I'm going to come up and create a little tail on it, almost like a question mark coming right into that area. Once I have that, I'm going to build the tangle flux in here. And so what I'm going to do is use that line coming up and out and right back in. Do the same thing on the other side and right back in. So just growing up and out, up and out, up and out. I'm just starting to come up to the very top. Now you'll notice that I've run out of space here but not on the top so I'll just keep going and I may even be able to put in one more. Once I have that inside of the tangle itself, we're going to add a little detail. So we'll come in, we'll do a line and three dots.
and then we're going to switch over to the other side and do the same thing. So here I am, same thing, and just to give it a different way of doing it, I'm just going to come down just like a question mark and connect to that area that we started in. Then I can connect over here, make a little teardrop, and then once again creating those little flux. It almost looks like a heart, the way that we're doing it. You can see that I'm close to the edge, so if I fall off, that's okay with me. We'll do one more off the top, right there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and come right in and start to add that detail. So that when I zoom back out, now we've got this really nice balance going on here. You've got the movement here and this movement in here. Go ahead and finish up and we'll go on to the next part. So now some of you have heard me talk about henna drum. I've used this tangle many times with you guys. It's one of my favorite tangles to work with. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build henna drum right off the side of this piece right here. So you can see that there's this space between this seed and the flux that we have here. So I'm just going to go ahead and create right off the side of the flux. So I'm going to do that something that looks like a crescent moon. So it's just a little bit of an arc. And then once I've done that arc, I'm going to aura the arc just like so. Now you can see that I've got space in here for my petals, so you want to be mindful when you're doing your arc. So for the petals now, I'm going to put two antennas here. So I'm going to go one and two, and then I'm going to aura my antennas. So I'm going to go up in here and I'm going to go one and two, just like that. Now this is going to have the look of kind of underlap and overlap, which is so interesting inside of a Zentangle. So in here, I'm going to start just by using these two inner antennas here, and I'm going to do a very soft little wave of the line. I'll come up here and I'll do a wavy line that connects and another wavy line that connects and drops down. So you can see there's my henna drum jumping right off the side there. I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of detailing to this part. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little bit of weight to the petal just by auraing and then dropping right back in. So I'll do a little aura right here and drop back in and a little aura right here and drop back in. And if you don't have enough room for it, don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and petal or puddle, sorry, inside of the piece just to give those a little bit of weight. And then I'm going to add a little bit more detailing in by adding a line and then a little bit of a dot at the end of the line. So you can see I'm just coming right in and getting right in there. Now for the inside of the henna drum right here, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of printemps in here. So I'm looking for a way to bring that in. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up from the bottom and give that a little swirl. Just like so. Once you have that, we're going to do that to the opposite side. So I'm just going to turn the piece just like so. And here we are again, right up at the top. So I'm looking for the space in between these two seeds right here. And I'm going to go ahead and create. Now I don't want that to be too large. And this side looks like it's got a little bit too much um, space between. But that's okay with me. So I'll come off and I'll go ahead and I'll look for where the space is in here that's going to make this easier. So I'll come in right about here, create my arc, give it another aura. 
Now I can go ahead and do my antennas. I'm going to go ahead and aura my antennas. And I'll give it a wavy line. Another wavy line. And another wavy line. I'm going to go ahead and give it some weight right on the edge. And then I'll go ahead and puddle into those spaces. And then the final component will be to add the line with the dot, line with a dot, line with a dot. Go ahead and finish that up and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you guys have heard me talk a little bit before about effervescing the tipple. And tipple are those really fun little circles that I love to do inside of my pieces. And you can see that I've got these little areas of negative space in here. And I want to kind of fill them up and have them be a little bit happy. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to start by creating a fairly large tipple first. And then I'm going to do a medium sized tipple. And then I'm going to do a smaller tipple that's getting away. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more. So I'll do a large tipple and I'll let a smaller tipple connect to it. And then I might just let one get away. So you can see how that brings a really nice energy into the piece. And this side is a little bit more quiet. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a fairly large tipple. I'm going to do a medium sized tipple that connects and then I'll do a smaller tipple that gets away. I'll do a large tipple, a medium tipple, and then a smaller tipple that's going to get away. And then if you've got a couple of spots up at the top that you would like to fill in, you could come in and add a couple in here. So you can see that I'm letting them kind of filter up into the piece. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. So I've got my medium and then my smaller one and then I'll let one more get away. So that when you come back, you've got that really nice energy of the bubbling tipples. Go ahead and finish those and then we're going to do the heart last. Okay, so we're going to come right into the center of the piece here, and I'm going to add a tipple right into the center of my heart. So you're going to see it's going to be a fairly small one, just like so. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide the space a little bit. I'm going to actually turn this upside down just to make it easy on myself here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and connect. And it almost looks like a backward six or almost like um, the letter D in here. So it could either be a backward six or a D, whatever you are seeing. Then I'm going to flip it right back up again. And I'm going to come right off the side. So you'll see that I'm going to come down just like so. Now once I have that, I'm going to start to work with the piece a little bit here. So here I am up at the top here, and I'm going to start to aura this line. So you're going to see that I'm just auraing and coming back down, aura and coming back down, aura, come back down, and I might be able to squeeze one more right in there. Once I have that, I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to go out, out, one more time. And if I can fit one more in there, I will. And then finally, right in here, I'm going to start to add a little bit of an aura right underneath this line. So I'm just going to go one, two, and three. So take a moment to finish that up, and we are going to get started with color. 
Okay, so we're going to start to create a little bit of color inside of this piece. Now, for some of you who have taken class with me before, you know that I like to talk about color just for a second. So each time you use a color pencil, that color pencil is three different colors. You have your light, you have your medium, and you have your dark. Now, if you're working with a lighter color for the inside of your heart here, and you are using a yellow, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between your light and your medium. So it's good to have a complementary color nearby that you can do your shading with, like an orange. So have those handy. Now for me, I'm gonna be working with my heart, but I'm gonna be working with a warm red and a cold red. You can see the difference here. This one has a little bit more warmth and this one's a little bit cooler. And that's just gonna give me a nice contrast. So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna to start to do some shading with the piece here. And I'm gonna start with my warmer of my colors here. And I'm gonna stay right on the outside edge of the piece here. And let's make this really nice and big for you. And what I'm gonna do is very, very softly start to shade inside this little aura around my heart. And you can see that I'm just very, very lightly starting to shade that. Once I've had a chance to go all the way around, I am going to start to work internally as well. So I'll come in here and start to work on the inside. Now notice that I am trying to leave a little white in the central channel here. That's just gonna make it look like the heart is glowing. And that's what we wanna get it to look like. So you can see I'm just getting right in there and leaving a little white in the central channel. Now notice I'm not being perfectionistic about it. I'm just letting it be there. Once I have that, I'm gonna come over to that colder red, and now I'm gonna to start to bring that red right into the piece, just on the edge, so you can see that I'm just outlining that black line right here. Getting right in there. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the inside as well. You can see that I'm just staying right on that inside line. And then finally, I'm gonna take a white pencil and kind of blur it out between the two. So you can see that I've got my little white pencil in here and I'm just doing these little circular mo movements right over that colder red and kind of moving it in towards the warmer red. And you can see that that starts to blur the line a little bit. So you can see this side versus this side. It's a little bit softer. I'll go in and I'll do the same thing up in here, just lightly softening it up. I'm getting right in there. And going right over here. And that's giving that heart a really nice glowy look. Almost like a neon heart. So go ahead, work that heart, and I will see you in a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna take that very same red that we were working with before, and we're gonna to start to bring it out into our little seeds here. And I'm just gonna bring it into the top of the seed here. So I'm just gonna go very, very lightly and add that right in here. And by the way, for those of you interested in knowing what color red this is, this is called Scarlet Lake, and the other red that I'm working with is called Magenta and the magenta is 930 and the scarlet lake is 923 so 
for those of you who are in the interested minds. So you can see that I'm right up in here in the seed and I'm gonna go ahead and just very lightly start to shade some of these in. Now once I've had the opportunity to shade those in, I'm gonna take that magenta and you wanna make sure that your pencil is nice and sharp and I'm gonna go in right around that little triangle and add a little bit of a glow to it. You can see that just by adding a little bit of that colder red, I'm gonna get a really nice glow on it. Then I can come back in with my white pencil and very gently start to mold the two together to start to get a very soft line. And you can see that that gives it a really nice glow. So go around, just do your seeds, the ones with the triangles inside of them, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so for this next part, we're gonna to start to work with two different purples that I have here. I've got one that is a lilac color, and this one is PC956. And then the next one that I have is PC9100. Uh, seven, and this is Imperial Violet. So I've got these two colors right here. Now remember, you don't have to use the same colors as me. You can really go off the rails if you want to. So I'm just going to start to come into the area around the heart. And what that's going to look like is I'm going to come in just with that light violet, or rather the lilac first, and just get right in there. And then once I have that, I'll come in with a little bit of that darker color and just start to add it right on the edge to get that really beautiful, rich color. Now you'll notice that I've left a little bit of white right on the edge here. And I can come in with my white pencil now and start to soften the edge a little bit just so that I get a really nice pastel feel. So you can see that when I bring this up, it's really got a nice soft glow to it. So go ahead, go around and do all of your tipple like that. Now you know me, I'm gonna start with all my light colors and go around and then come back in with the dark. But go ahead, work your way around, and I'll see you soon. Relax, take a deep breath, enjoy what you're doing. Okay. So I'm gonna use a technique that I called carrying color. We're gonna take this very same color that we have right here, this purple, and we're gonna to start to bring it up into the petals of the henna drum. Now I'm gonna start with the lighter color first, and I'm gonna very, very softly start to bring that light color right into those petals. And you can see that I'm just barely touching the page with my pencil here and I'm working with that pencil in a nice circular motion to get a really nice saturation of color. Once I have that in there, I'm gonna let go of that lilac and I'm gonna to start to bring in that imperial violet. And what that's gonna look like is we're gonna start right in at that corner there and start to bring some of that depth in at the bottom. And you can see that I don't have to push hard on this pencil because I know that there's enough pigment in there to make this interesting. Now I can press a little bit harder at the bottom just to get a little bit more depth. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm coming up halfway with that violet, very nice light touch. Then I'm pressing a little bit harder at the bottom. Same thing over here. and then pressing harder at the bottom. Once I have that, I can go in with that white pencil that I have right here, and I can very, very gently now start to blend in that lighter lilac with that purple. And you can see that that starts to give it a really nice kind of soft pastel -y edge. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one down here. So go ahead and do your petals and I'll see you soon. Okay, so for this next part, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab for a really beautiful 
yellowy orange and then a really nice strong orange so the yellow orange that I have in my hand this is called Spanish orange and this is PC1003 and then the other orange that I have here this is pale vermilion and this is PC912 now remember you don't have to use the same colors as me if you want to use something else please feel free so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work in the areas right around the seeds here. So I'm going to come in right here and let's make this nice and large. We're going to come in and just very, very softly start to bring in that beautiful Spanish orange. And this is definitely one of my go-to oranges for sure. So you can see I've got those two petals right there. Now I'm going to take that vermilion, the pale vermilion, and I'm just going to very, very softly touch down and go about halfway up the petal here. Now I'm going to give it a little strong push right at the bottom to get a little glow off of it. See how that happened? I'll do the same thing right here. So a very gentle, soft push. and then a strong push right down. Then I'll come in with a little bit of a white pencil and gently start to blend those in. And you can see that that gives it a really soft glow. So we're gonna go through all the way around in here and start to build that up. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you soon. So now we're going to take the very same color that we have right in here and we're going to start to bring it into the tipple that are out here because we want the color to feel like it's emanating outward. So I'm going to start by bringing this in nice and close and I'll start over on this side. And you can see that I've got that really light Spanish yellow in my hand and I'm just going to very softly start to fill in that tipple here. And then once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and grab that darker orange and very, very softly start to fill in the sides, just like so. Now I'll come back in with that yellow and I'll just do a little bit of blending between the two since it's such a nice color to work with and it keeps it nice and vibrant. So you can go through and do all of your tipple with that really nice color combination or you can use a different color combination you could try a pink with a purple or a turquoise with a dark blue you could do all sorts of different things so have fun play and i'll see you in a minute okay so you can see that i've had a chance to bring some of that orange into the tipple here. What we're going to do is we're going to start to work right into our flowers here. And you can see that I'm using the mineral orange for this part. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and just very, very gently start in with the mineral orange. And you can see that I'm going very, very lightly here. And I'm working that pencil in a circular like motion so that it gives a really nice saturation of color. And the reason why I'm just using the mineral orange is because I want to get a little bit of a contrast between the yellow and the mineral orange that I used in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by pressing a little bit harder now right in the center and start to get a little bit of contrast going around in that swirl there. And let's make this really nice and big so that you can see it. And so now what I'm starting to do is I'm starting to lighten up as I work my way out of the center. So you can see that that is getting a little bit lighter as I go out. So I'm getting almost like a brownish feel off of that internal piece here. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of that medium brown right here on the edge and a little bit of medium brown right here on this edge. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a little bit of light in towards the center. Now, if I want to, I can come in and I can gently start to blend those edges where the light is meeting the mineral orange. So 
I'm just coming in and getting a little bit of light in there. And you can see that that gives me enough of a contrast between here and here to make it look different. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my page here and I'm going to do the opposite side just like that and I'll have you do the same. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so once I've had a chance to do both of the internal pieces here, I'm going to take some of that same red that we were using in the beginning and I'm going to bring it right into the center of the flower and I'm just going right over some of that mineral orange that we were using. So you can see I'm just going nice and softly and I'm starting to lift off of the piece just a little bit just so that I don't get too, too much of that red. You can see I'm starting to fade off of it and that gives that a really interesting appeal into the center. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I've just turned my piece and what I'm gonna do is just come right into the center, give that a nice push of some of that red in there. So I'm using about a medium tension here. And what I'm gonna to start to do is I'm gonna to start to fade off. I'm lifting up on that pencil a little bit as I move out and that gives this a really interesting kind of feel with that flower. And if you want to, you can come back in with some of that mineral orange and just kind of soften it as you're leaving the center of the piece here. And if you really want to, you can grab some of that white and buffer out the edges. So go ahead and do those centers and I'll see you soon. Okay, so now we're gonna to start to work with um, the leaves that we have here. You can see I've got a leaf right in here and I've got a leaf right over here. So I've got them on both sides of the piece here and I've got a really beautiful green and some of you know that I've been working with the idea of working with pencils I don't normally use. And so the color on this pencil is PC109 and this is Prussian green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by working inside of the flux that I've created here. So I'm just gonna very, very gently with this color start to come into the piece here. And what I like about this green is that it's got a little bit of the bluishness of a parrot green, but it also has a little bit of the ashiness that I love in an olive green. So it seems like it's a nice mixture between the two. And you can see that I'm just very lightly starting to add in that color into the flux. And I really think it goes quite beautifully with that purple. So if you're one of those people that's always looking for great pairings, uh, that purple that we were using earlier seems to go really, really nicely with this green. So I'm just starting to get in there with that flux. Coming all the way up and let's make sure that we stay on camera. Hello. <laughs> Once I've had a chance to get all the way up there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to add a little bit of depth in towards the bottom here. And that's gonna look a little something like this. So we're gonna to start to press a little bit harder and get a little bit of depth at the bottom but fading out towards the tip a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing over here. So we're just gonna use a nice medium tension here. And then once we get in towards the center, we're gonna press really hard and get a nice strong green down at the bottom so that you can see that it has a nice intensity that fades off and out. So it'll look a little something like medium tension all about three quarters of the way up the flux here. And then we're gonna go ahead and press really hard right in towards the center here. So I'm just gonna to continue to work my way up Get a little bit of depth. And this is what I love working with um, really high uh, body color because then you don't have to switch pencils um, and change things out. It's nice that way. But you know, you can use any color you want for this if you want to use a really pretty um, chartreuse with a forest green. You could do that. You could use the parrot green with a really pretty um, darker green like a phalo green would be beautiful with it. So whatever is kind of piquing your interest today, you know, you don't have to do the same thing that I'm doing. So I'm just coming around, getting right in here. 
and you can see how beautiful that shading is. So I'm gonna flip my piece and I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side and you go for it as well. Take your time and enjoy, I'll see you soon. All right, so we're gonna to continue to carry that green and we're gonna take that green and bring it inside of this leaf right here. So I'm just gonna take that green and start to lightly shade on the interior of this leaf here. And I'm being mindful to not get into the, um, the circle that we have on the end of that line. And I'm just really starting to get in there. Now, once I have that, I'm going to I'm going to do my shading around the perimeter here just to give this a little bit of depth. So you can see that I'm starting to give that medium tension all the way around the perimeter, still being very mindful of where that little circle is. And I'm just starting to work that out. And then I'll start to push a little bit harder right on the edge here. You can see that I'm staying right on that black line and giving it a push. Then I'll come in and I'll add a little bit of white just to blur the edge of where those shading pieces are. And that's just gonna soften this up. Just like that. So go ahead, do both sides and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to finish that one up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Micron PN and I'm gonna to start to work my way in towards the center of the piece here. And I'm just gonna very gently start to puddle in the lower part of the V in here. So you can see that I'm just getting in there and starting to puddle. And we're gonna come back in with some white later on and add some interest into here. So go ahead and start to work inside of your Vs and get that nice kind of rich black working in there. And you'll start to notice places like your interstices in here. You can see that I've got some places where I need to add some black to where my tipple was. So you can start to work in those as well. So have some fun with this and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've added in the black in here, and I even added a little bit of black into my leaves down in here and left a little bit of white right in the corner. You can see that I've left a little white to add as a reflection in the corner in here and down in here. So you can see that I've got my reds back in my hands again. This is the same red that we started with in here, and we're going to use this as our background color. Now you'll notice that I've got my warmer red in my hand and my darker red for later on. We're going to be using this as the background, and you can see that I'm going to come in here and start to fill in the space with that lighter red. And I'm going to start to work my way around the piece. And you can see that I'm starting to work that pencil in that circular like motion just to get a really nice feel from it. Now you'll see that I'm kind of lightening up as I move my way out to the edge of the piece. We're going to be adding a little bit of a sunburst of yellow into the edges for this particular piece here. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just going along the edge and starting to add in that color. And when I get that nice color going, I will be adding some darker shading around the edge of the flower and the leaves here. So you can see that I'm just going around and I'm going to do the whole background in this nice light color. So you go ahead and do the whole background in this nice light color and we'll come back and we'll work with some of the other colors that we have. I'll see you soon. Okay, so you can see that I've filled the background in with that first really nice light red. Now what we're gonna to start to do is bring a little bit more intensity into the background color. So I have that magenta color that we were using earlier, that nice darker red, and I'm gonna to start to do what I call like an aerial shading. And you can see that what this does is it starts to give definition around our main subject, right? That beautiful flower that's in the center. And you can see that I'm coming in and I'm giving this about medium tension in here. 
and starting to work around the flower and work around the uh, the henna drum that's down in here as well. So I'm just working around the whole thing here. And you can see that I'm going to drop down a little bit in here, but I'm going to leave a little light in the center and then do a little bit of darkness right in here as well. So you can see that I'm just adding some of that darkness and then a little bit of darkness up here, but leaving light in the center just to give it some interest. Now you're gonna go around the whole piece and you're gonna do this. And then once you've had a chance to go all the way around the whole piece, we're gonna to start to go along the edge and really add some in-depth shading. So you can see in here, I'm staying on that black line here and starting to add a little bit more darkness to get it to pop or to glow. So you can see that I'm just really starting to get in there and work around the piece and get that really beautiful glow happening here. So remember that mantra that we're always talking about, right? Light, medium, dark, light, medium, dark, right? So it's always one of those things that you're thinking about in the back of your head is light, medium, dark. I'm just getting in here and starting to add that glow, staying on camera so that I don't leave you guys in the dust and working all the way around so that when I zoom out, you can really see that this has quite the glow to it. Now what will happen is we'll probably start to come in and do some blending on the edges in here so that it isn't so hard. Um, and you could even come in and soften just a little bit right on the edge so that you don't have such a hard line of demarcation. So you can see that I'm coming in and just softening up the edge just a little bit. So go around the whole perimeter, all the way around your leaves, and do that nice shading, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around and look at that really neat glow that we've got going on here. So I've got a lot of that red in the background, and now we've got this really nice outline going on around the piece, and it's starting to really come together. So what I'm gonna start to do is I'm gonna actually blend out some of my colors here. I've got my yellow in my hand, which is gonna create kind of a really pretty watercolor feel to the piece. So I'm just gonna start right up in here, and let's get this nice and close so you can see what I'm up to. So I've got this whole area in here that has all the red, and I'm just gonna very, very lightly start to bring in little swaths of that Spanish orange. And I'm not gonna do it everywhere, I'm just gonna do it in some of the spots. So you can see I'm just gonna come up in here and add some up at the top. And then I'll come down a little bit over here and then I'll skip some spots. So now I'll come over in here and add little pieces like this. So if you're working in a green and you wanted to add um, some yellow to it, you could do that. It just depends on what your background color is. So if you've chosen a different background color, so let's just say you did work with a green, you could always work with a yellow to go with it. If you were working with a blue in your background, you could grab a purple or a red to go in it. Uh, if you were working with a yellow, you could always grab an orange to go in the background, but you can see that just by adding little swaths of orange um, or this, this kind of Spanish orange, it's starting to give the piece this really neat kind of watercolory feel. And you can see that I'm being very random about the places where I'm adding it. I'm not being perfectionistic about it. In fact, I'm being uh, just very, very messy with it. So I'm coming down here towards the bottom and starting to add in some places over here and getting right in there. And then I'll start to work over here. And it's okay that I'm close to my tipple um, because there's enough of a variation in the color so that it's not competing with it. And I'm not pushing that hard on the pencil either. So that when I come out and I zoom out, you can see, whoops, that you get a little bit of a variation with the color and it makes it really, really interesting. Now, if you're wanting to soften up the edges a little bit, you can always go ahead and grab some of your white and just start to blend in 
some of those areas that are around those colors. So let's get that to zoom in again. So here's a really great spot to, to do this in. You can see I've got some of that really nice orange, but then I've got the red over here. So I'm just going to very lightly soften this up a little bit so that when I blend it out, it gets a really nice soft blend. So I'm just working my way around in here and just kind of softening things up. You can see how nice that, that lands there. Just coming in over here. And once again, remember, be random with it. That's what makes it look interesting. Just starting to work my way around the piece. Here's another spot where I can soften. And I can soften up in here too. So that when I zoom out, let's see if that worked. There, you can see how soft and beautiful that is. It really has a delicateness to it. So go ahead and play, have some fun, and we're gonna come back in and finish up the center. Okay, so we're gonna come back and work into the center of this piece here. And you know, I've left this part for last because it's really quite quite frankly up to you what color you want to put in the center. You could try using the colors that you used on your petals. You could use the yellow that's out here. Uh, you could use the green that's out here. It's really kind of your choice. I'm really enjoying this green, so I think I'm gonna bring the green into the center here. And what that's gonna look like is, I'm gonna start by gently bringing in some of this green let's get this nice and close here and I'm going to start by basically shading the perimeter so you'll see me kind of come up in here and you'll notice that I'm leaving the white right in here on the curvature you know leaving a little bit of white over there as well and then you see this little line in here I'm going to add some definition right along that line just to make it interesting. I'll come over here and continue to shade around the perimeter a little bit and I'm going to go up this line a little bit and add a little bit of definition. So you can see I'm leaving light in the center here, light in the center here, and light in the center there. This is going to give it dimension. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to add a little bit of definition to this by doing a medium tension. And I'll come up in here and still define the outside edge of the heart. I'm just adding that in. Coming around. And then I'll go up the side of this and give it a little bit of dimension. The side of this one and give it a little bit more dimension. You can see I'm pushing a little bit harder here. And right up the middle of the heart. Now once I have that, I really feel like I want to bring in some of this yellow into here. Now because I have green, I know that I can use some of that yellow to make it blend. Now if you have purple here, you, you could use some red. If you had some blue there, you could also use red or a green. Um, so I'm just going to bring in just a touch of that yellow and start to let it blend into some of that green. And just have some fun with it. That just gives it a really nice dimension in there. And then I'll even come in and grab some of my white and soften it out with some of my white. Now you want to be really, really careful that you don't turn it into too much of a blend. You'll get mud. So you just want to kind of lightly soften in there. And I think that's about as much of the color as I want to add to that. 
So go ahead and do your heart and have some fun with it. And if you want, you can just use one color. You don't have to use the second color. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring some of that purple that I have on the outside edge, and that's gonna be my center. So take your time, finish up what you have, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm just gonna come back in here and add a little bit of that purple into the center of my circle in the center of my heart. And then I'll add a little bit of darkness right on the edge just to keep things interesting. Now, if you know me and you've taken many of my classes before, you know that I love to use a technique called wallpaper. And one of the things that I love about wallpaper is that you can be very random with it. And I love that about it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And we're going to start to add some wallpaper into this piece. So you can see that I've got my magenta here that I'm going to be working with. And I love using the darker color that's going to be going into the background. And for this particular piece, I'm actually only going to wallpaper on one side. And so it's going to bring kind of a, an asymmetry to the piece. So I'm going to start right in here. And for those of you who have never done wallpaper before, I normally like to use uh, Pronton for this. I like it because it's a great background for the piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to work in this area right here. And you want to make sure that your pencil is nice and sharp. I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to do some Pronton nice and tight. In this area and you want to make sure that your spirals are nice and tight because it makes it interesting to look at. So you can see I'm just coming in and just getting a nice large pronton going in here. Now once I have that I'm going to start to add some smaller ones in there so you can see that I'm doing some smaller pieces and keeping them nice and tight. You want them nice and uh, tight into each other. So you get almost like an overlap or an underlap here. And you can see that I'm just starting to move around the piece and add some more into these different areas here. So I'm just going in and adding those around, but I'm not, I'm not going to saturate the whole area. I'm going to leave some spaces blank. So you can see that I'm just working my way into the piece and moving around and adding the variating sizes. So this one will be a little bit smaller and maybe I'll do another one right over here and do a little bit more. So you're going to move around your piece and add in the pronton randomly just to keep things nice and interesting. So go around, do just this one side and keep space in between your wallpaper. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we are going to add a little bit of white to this piece just to give it some definition here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a little bit larger for us. Um, I'm using my white Signo Uniball pen, and I'm just gonna go into these places right here and start to add a little white dot right over the black that I have here. So you can see that I'm just going in and adding that little white dot and you know just take your time with it so I'm just going in and adding that and then once I've had a chance to go around with that I'm also going to add some white into my my tipple here so you can see that I'm right over here and I'm going to add some white right in this area so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a line and then I'm going to give it a dot so you'll see that I'm just going to work my way through these and add some interest to it with a little bit of the white. So go through and do yours and then we will come back and finish up the final piece. Okay, so for this last part, we're just going to come into our leaf here and add a little bit of shading. And you can see that I have my violet back in my hand. This color right here that I was using is now in my hand. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shading inside of this piece right here. And I'm gently going to take that purple and let it just outline the leaf a little bit. And I'll come right over here and do the same.
just to give it some interest and leave a little bit of white right on the outside edge just to keep a little highlight going. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press nice and hard right on that black line and get just a little hush of purple right on that inside edge. Now if you wanted to, you could take a little bit of black and let's make this nice and big so that you can really see what I'm up to. You could take a little bit of black and bring it inside of the diamond that we have up here. So I'm just going to come in and add a little bit of black into that diamond just like so. So let's do the same thing on the other side here. So I'm just going to flip this bad boy upside down, add a little bit of that purple right here, just getting that really nice soft hush of purple. I'm not pressing hard. I'm leaving some white on that outside edge. And then once I've got all of that nice purple in there, I'm going to give it a good hard press right next to the black. So you can see that I'm just getting right in there and doing it up. And then I'm going to take my black diamond here And once I've got that diamond all filled in, we are on our way to being finished. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to look for a place to put my chop. And you know me, I'm always looking for a good place to hide it. And this looks like a really good spot right here. So I'm going to hide my chop right in here. And then that way I know I've finished the piece. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to finish up the piece, and I'm really enjoying this one, and I hope that you did too. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please, please, please give us a thumbs up on uh, YouTube or leave us a nice review. It helps more people to find the videos. And if you're interested in joining our Tangled Yogi community, uh, we have a great Facebook page, Tangled Yogi Art Community page. Lots of great students there and lots of great artists that are doing really fun things with these compositions. So please, please, please experiment and have some fun with these. And I hope that you'll come back and try the piece again. You can see I've done it a couple of times and I plan on doing it some more because it's such a fun, fun piece. So uh, lastly, if you're interested in the Maryland tile, you can always go to tangledyogi.com and check out our Tangled Yogi shop and buy some Maryland tiles and support me in this time of social distancing. And that would be so, so appreciated. Well, I'm looking forward to working with you guys again soon. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and please know that I'm thinking about you. So bye for now. This is Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi, signing off.